What's going on YouTube? Flashy here. Welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Lately, I've been getting a ton of comments of people asking things like how to craft cards and how to build certain decks and things like that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over five tips for when you're first starting out in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Now, some of these tips might be like, yeah, no dub, but there's quite a few people that are coming in to Master Duel. They never played Yu-Gi-Oh! before. The game is completely different from anything they've ever played in the past. So we're going to be going from the very beginner stages of this game. And the first place, and I think the best place to start, that is going to be so solo mode so we're gonna go into solo mode here and as you can see you have a ton of different little like storylines and things like that and the reason solo mode is so good is because you get to test out so many different types of decks like each of these little scenarios i guess you'll call them these are all a different archetype of decks so you get to test out a bunch of really cool different ways to play and different archetypes and things like that not only that but when you go into it so let's just pick a random one here we're going to monarch this is also a great way of unlocking some really early stuff so first you can see if we just go into duel like as you can see if i do this I'll get a Dark Monarch card if I want to make a Monarch deck. So you get a lot of things here for just completing. You also get a lot of gems. As you can see at the end here, if you complete this scenario, you get 200 gems. And gems are super important in this game if you want to craft decks and open packs. So I suggest just going through the solo mode. I haven't finished it yet, as you guys can see. But I do like to go through it, play a couple of duels, do a couple scenarios here and there. And like I said, it's a great way to start. My first deck that I ever built was actually a deck that came from this solo mode. So I definitely recommend going into it and just learning the game, learning different archetypes and unlocking a lot of different cards and gems and things like that throughout your time. So now moving into tip number two, how to craft cards. So obviously cards, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! It's the most important thing in the game, right? But not a lot of people know how to actually craft the cards they need. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into deck we're going to pick any random one here. Let's just pick my Exodia one. You're going to want to press edit deck. And now, as you can see, a whole host of cards pop up here. So what you want to do is click this button here, this like card. And when it's two cards, this shows all the cards in the game. And if you click it and it's just one, this shows just the cards that you own. You could do a bunch of different things like sort by rarity, how many you own, when you obtained it. There's a whole bunch of different filters as well. So let's say you're making a dragon deck. You can just scroll down here and you can just click the dragon type and it'll only show your dragon cards. So there's a whole way of like filtering and going through. And then what you want to do is when you're actually building the deck, is click this two here and then make any card that you possibly can think of so for example let's just type in elemental hero neos this is my favorite card back in the day let's see so elemental hero neos so as you can see it's right here and there's different rarities as well so you have ultra rare super rare rare and then common and those correlate with these up here so of course you have your commons your uncommons super rare and ultra rare ultra rares are very hard to craft it takes a while it's what makes the decks quote unquote expensive but what you're going to want to do let's say you find your card that you want you simply just go down to this button here generate and you'll be able to make as many as you want based on how many craft points you have so let's say you wanted to make three it's not going to let me but you just press this plus right here and it'll let you know how many you're going to have then you craft three and there you go you have three elemental hero neos cards so nice and easy all you got to do is just go to edit deck type in the card you want and you just press generate however many you want to generate and you actually do not need to own the card to put them into your deck but you need to own them to play the deck so for example if i go back i think there's a deck here yeah if i go to my numeron deck as you can see i have the deck list but some of the cards are going to be like grayed out that means i do not have them and i cannot play this deck but if you just want to kind of see what the deck is going to look like this is a really good way you can just put all the cards there that you need as you kind of gain crafting points you can come back in craft the cards you can go out get some new packs and things like that and now tip like 2.5 of that is crafting your essential cards so the first thing you're going to want to do there's quite a few cards in master duel that are pretty much essential like they're part of the meta you really can't win without them there's a ton of videos on youtube about what cards those actually are so i would definitely recommend going to check those out but some really simple ones just to start max c is one of the most broken cards in the game you're gonna want this pretty much in every single one of your decks ash blossom is another really good one then you also of course have nibiru you're gonna want to craft some of these another great card is infinite impermanence these are all pretty much just negate cards like people are just gonna be doing some massive combos and all these cards are gonna give you a chance to fight back and counter that and then two more cards that you might want we'll go with droplet droplet's a great card you grab forbidden droplet and then also effect veiler so as you can see I actually don't have all of these cards. I pretty much just made sure to get Maxi and Ash Blossom. I think those are crucial and Nibiru as well. But again, those are the essentials and they all are relatively expensive. So all those crafting points for ultra rares, you kind of got to make a decision on if you want to make cards for your deck 
or if you want to make these quote unquote essentials, which are going to be in every deck that you make, which I would recommend is making those essentials. And this is another really good place to start when it comes to crafting your essentials. If you go to shop, go to special and then bundle deal, you'll see there's three bundles here and all of them come with 10 master packs, which are really good. But you get Ash Blossom, you get Lightning Storm and you get Solemn Judgment. These all cost, I believe, 750 gems each. If I'm not mistaken, it doesn't let me see, of course, because I bought them already. But I think these are just 750 gems, which you could easily get just by playing the game. And you get some really, really solid essential cards, as well as up to 30 packs. And that's going to just build out your entire library of cards, which is really important because you'll be able to start dismantling cards, get other cards for certain decks, unlock secret packs, which we're going to get into that right now. So over the course of opening a bunch of packs, you're going to get cards that you just don't want. You just don't need them, right? So what do you want to do with them? You're going to want to dismantle them. That's how you get these craft points pretty much. There's other ways, but the main way is to get these craft points is to dismantle the cards that you're not going to want in your library. And now an easy way to do that is if you go up here to this little three lines, click this. I actually didn't know about this until like a week and a half into playing the game and I was dismantling cards one by one and it took forever. But what you can do, the first step you wanna do is dismantle all extra cards. So what you're gonna see here is your current craft points down here and then obtain craft points. So extra cards refer to cards that you own more than three of. You can only ever have three of one card in a deck so having more than that is just not necessary. So real quick, the game will just go through and flush out all of those extra cards and leave you with just three of that card. You just press dismantle. I just did this the other day, so I don't have that many left. All you gotta do is just press dismantle. It'll load and then dismantled and then you'll just get all your points up there. It's a really, really good way, especially after opening those 30 master packs or something, hit that dismantle all extra cards and that'll just boost your mostly common and uncommons but you might get a few super rares in there as well and now the easiest way to actually dismantle specific cards let's say you did your extra cards and now you still have more cards you need to dismantle you go to dismantle selected cards and now this is going to give you a grid of about 60 that you can put in here and what i like to do is just sort this by rarity it just gives me a really easy way like let's say i need to build a bunch of super rares or rares this is a really good way to just go through. Now, all of these cards you can dismantle and they're in rarity order. So all your ultra rares are at the top. You can go down into your super rares. I have a ton of super rares, so let's scroll a little bit more. Now, here's all of our rares and things like that. And literally all you have to do is just, you could either just drag it or you could click it, press the plus one down here. And that's pretty much it. It's really simple. You just drag them over and then we'll just press dismantle up here. Remember, you could do up to 60. It'll tell you how many you're gonna get dismantle and there you go you just got a bunch of crafting points and now one more really quick tip in terms of getting actual cards so if you go to your shop and you look up secret packs so as you guys are going to see i have three secret packs here that only say eight hours left so what's going to happen is when you're opening packs like master packs or stalwart force or any packs at all when you're opening them if you get a card in it that's from a certain pack that will be unlocked in your 24 hours secret packs so for example let's open a master pack right now We'll just go one, we'll purchase it. Let's see what we get. We're just gonna skip the animation, we don't need it. So it says you found a new card pack. So one of these cards, which is the gateway of the six, comes in the great Shogun's rule card pack, right? Which is right here, it just shows you. So we'll press okay, great, we got some new cards, cool. Now we'll go in a secret pack and look, there it is right there, the great Shogun's rule. It'll be available for 24 hours for you to open. And these packs are all very archetype and deck specific. So for example, this shark's pride is great for me because as you guys can see, I'm going to go back, I'm going to go to deck and I will pick my shark's deck that I'm currently building. Let's say I needed some buzzsaw sharks, right? And I didn't want to generate them or anything like that, but I want to go for them. I'm going to just press down here how to obtain. And as you guys can see, it's available in the shark's pride pack. So when you're building out your decks, you really want to just try to focus on whatever packs those cards come in. It'll just be much easier and much cheaper way of building that deck out and getting the cards you actually need as opposed to a bunch of cards that you're just gonna end up dismantling but regardless that's a really that's a small little tip but it ends up working out really nicely if you know what type of deck you want and now finally the last thing and i didn't even think about this until i was just recording but what you can do let's say you're playing online against someone in ranked and you really like their deck you think it's an absolutely awesome archetype they absolutely destroyed you and you're like man i want to try that deck out well master duel actually has something really cool so what you can do and i've actually built decks based on this because of what somebody has done to me like i was playing against someone and i was like dude that deck just destroyed me what am i supposed to do so what you're going to want to do is you want to go into your ranked you're going to go to match history and as you can see i have this duel right here make sure to remember the opponent's name so you know just in case there's like a bunch of duels there it's in chronological order so your most recent duel will be at the top 
So you click this and then you go down to confirm opponent's deck. So once you press confirm opponent's deck, it'll bring you to this. It looks like we were playing against a blue eyes player. So you're like, wow, this deck was so cool. What did they use? You're going to go down right here to copy deck. And then you just press copy. And now we can go all the way back. We've got to keep going back, keep going back. We're going to go to our decks. And then this part was really cool. I really like this feature. You'll find one that's called opponent's deck. And then you just press edit. And now you have your opponent's deck that you actually just played against and that you like. So as you guys can see, all of them are here. I don't have any of this person's cards, but it's a really good way. You know, you can start crafting. You could just start messing around with it, putting in cards you like, cards you don't like, things like that. And this is just a really cool way to just get some ideas for decks that you want to use. Now, this doesn't mean that your opponent is always going to have the most optimal deck, especially in the earlier rank stages. Like if you're in like silver, bronze, or maybe even early gold. But again, it's just a really good way to get an idea for an archetype and what cards you might need or to just look up other decks online or on YouTube or Twitch or anything like that. And that brings me to my last and final tip is just to watch YouTube videos and to watch Twitch streams of people playing Master Duel, people playing Yu-Gi-Oh. It's really good to just see all the different types of decks, different archetypes, different ways people play. And it'll give you a good idea of what you want to craft, what you want to play, how to play against the most meta deck. Just watching Yu-Gi-Oh and just getting more of an understanding because there's so much. There's so many cards, so many effects, so many combos. You always just want to be watching and learning, watching tournaments, watching streamers, whatever the case is. But that'll wrap up our beginner guide on Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something new because all of this stuff was stuff I wish I knew. My first week of playing this game would have saved me a lot of time. But if you guys like the Master Duel content and you want more, please be sure to subscribe. Leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'm going to see you all in the next one.